Great. So now let's remember what new tech is. So just like direct air capture or uh, bioenergy with carbon capture and sequestration, new tech does not yet exist. I mean, it doesn't exist. There's no fusion power even demonstrated uh, to be net energy positive for a microsecond yet. Uh, there's no uh, arc reactor yet, although Iron Man is working on it. But um, uh, so again, if you pull this lever, you're committing to an aggressive R&D program, dramatically expanding the fusion program here at MIT and at other institutions around the world, and you're hoping there will be a technical breakthrough. So let's advance that to a moderate uh, breakthrough. And that's the orange uh, band right here. Um, now, let's, let's do an experiment before uh, we do that with just new tech, right? Good experimentation, you want to vary one thing at a time. So let me pull the new tech lever from the base case uh, up to that medium breakthrough. And there's a large wedge of new tech now coming on stream. And all by itself, that took 0.4 degrees off of the expected warming by 2100. Now, um, any comments? Do you have any thoughts about that? It didn't solve the problem, and maybe the breakthrough isn't big enough. There is a huge breakthrough now. What does that mean? So that means that the uh, initial cost is very low, and then the cost comes down through learning and scale economies. And the breakthrough is happening, I believe, in the year 2030. Is that correct? Maybe it's happening. No, I think it's happening today. So right now, across campus, this means net energy positive fusion is demonstrated for a few small fractions of a, of a second. That would be an enormous, huge breakthrough. Why doesn't it solve our climate problem? It means we can have carbon-free energy cheaper than coal. And you do get a lot of it in the simulation. Why isn't it solving the problem? Even though the, the, uh, the discovery is basically today, it takes a couple of decades before it really starts to scale. So do you think that's reasonable? Do, you know, what would have to happen if they have that first demonstration of net positive energy, more energy out from the fusion reactor from the Takamak or whatever it is uh, than they put in for a tiny fraction of a second? Then what has to happen before you can actually run your economy with that? You have to build the plants, you have to scale up the technology, and even before that, you have to bring it from, we did it for a tiny fraction of a second, a microsecond or so, to continuous power. Huge technical challenges in doing that. Then it's, since it's a radical new technology, whether it's fusion or thorium nukes or artificial leaf or uh, the flux capacitor or the arc reactor, it doesn't matter, you're going to have to go through a very long process of demonstrating to all the governments and people of the world that it's safe. You're going to have to build supply chains. You're going to have to find sites. It's going to take a long, long time. Now, we can change some of the assumptions about that. So, for example, uh, if we try the advanced tab here and uh, make the breakthrough year 2030, and that's, you know, that's in the ballpark of what people are talking about, but let's make the breakthrough today. Um, there's a 10-year commercialization delay, which is what you spoke about just a minute ago, but let's be even more optimistic. Let's change it to one year. doesn't make that much difference because you've still got to prove it out, bring it to the point of a commercially uh, viable prototype, and then deploy and scale up. And we could even lower the cost dramatically. So now it starts out half the price of coal. Starts out half the price of coal. Then it gets even cheaper as you gain scale and uh, go down the learning curve. And it makes a huge difference to the amount of new tech clean energy you're getting but you're still at 3.4. So it's now beginning to diffuse a lot earlier. You're starting to get significant global diffusion around 2030, um, even with these very optimistic assumptions. But watch what happens. Look at the total bar here, and also look at what happens uh, to renewable. Let's pull new tech all the way, and then let me replay it. Now, watch what happens. There's your renewables. How many renewables do we get in this new tech scenario? None. 
Why would you build wind and solar and, and storage to go with it if you've got new tech that's super cheap? You wouldn't. So there's a substitution effect. The other thing is, look what's happening to the total amount of energy demand here. I'll replay it again. Total primary energy isn't changing much, but let's look at end use energy. So that is final energy use. The black line is the no action case, and the blue line is with the new tech, okay? And you can see what happens here is total energy demand goes up. Why? You've made it way cheaper. And so this is one of the kinds of rebound effects that can arise and undermine the benefits of your policy. Uh, and then the, the, uh, the last thing we already talked about, which is simply the long delays in getting that out. And as you mentioned, uh, if we go back to the primary energy uh, graph, uh, you still are burning an awful lot of fossil energy during this transition period. So that's a set of experiments with new tech alone. Now let's go back here to our policy and we pull the lever to get some new tech. Now you do get some. Why aren't you getting a huge amount like we did when we did it all by itself? You're subsidizing renewables very heavily here and that accelerates the rate at which they are driven down their learning curve and gain scale economies in their supply chains and manufacturing processes. So it becomes cheaper than new tech and it's very fast to deploy wind and solar and, uh, and storage compared to building large facilities, which your fusion energy would be. So you do get some new tech, but you've spent an awful lot of money in R&D, and it didn't make much difference. Now, you're all welcome, as we go around the room, to unblock or to block renewables here and see if new tech uh, can carry the day. But I think you just saw over here that even if you have a gigantic breakthrough, it's not getting you all the way to where you want to go. But that's entirely up to you.